This has all been placed here by the devs. They made their own city, which I think is really cool. Everything about this area, it doesn't break your immersion. It's just really cool to see. Alright, getting ready for this pull. How hard can this custom dungeon be, right? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, so much damage. Oh, and I'm dead. Holy crap. Wow, we just wiped so hard. This dungeon is incredibly difficult. Hey everyone, my name is Shikari Dill, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at and reviewing TurtleWow. This is a server that offers a classic experience with cool extra features and custom content. I'm planning on reviewing other cool WoW private servers and projects because there are a lot of cool servers doing unique things and putting their own creative twist on World of Warcraft. So if I can use my channel to highlight these servers and check them out and let you know if they're worth your time, maybe I can turn that into a series. So let me know if that sounds interesting to you. So what is TurtleWow? Well, TurtleWow is a vanilla WoW server with extra features and custom content that adds to the classic experience. Some of these key features include custom dungeons, custom quest hubs and leveling zones, you can be a high elf for the alliance or you can be a goblin for the horde, there's transmog and a lot more quality of life changes. They've also added a new custom profession called survival. Now correct me if I'm wrong, this was a profession that was cut from early alpha back in the day, but on this server this is just a fun profession that adds immersion to the vanilla WoW experience. They've also added custom items with custom vendors where it makes sense. So it all feels very immersive and the new custom items aren't very overpowered. They're also working on a class-wide rebalance of spells and talents while keeping the classes feeling very vanilla, but there's no ETA for that at the moment. So this server is a times one leveling speed, so a good chunk of your time will be leveling. However, something unique about this server is they've added a war mode you can enable using a glyph at the starting area for your raise. Turning this on will enable world PvP for you, however you will get a 30% experience boost. So that should help you level a little bit faster, granted you're not relentlessly ganked all the time. So that was an overview of some of the key features that this server has to offer, but I want to just go ahead and break down each of these features as I experience them on the server and just give you my feedback and how it played out. Right off the bat, after creating your character and jumping right into the game, you'll notice a few extra UI elements. This includes their looking for dungeon tool, I, I mean looking for turtles as they call it. And yes, this is their version of a looking for group system in this classic WoW server, but I'm going to tell you why I think it works in this server later on in the video. There's also a very rudimentary battleground finder tool, and most notably, there is a donation shop. After looking through the donation shop, there doesn't appear to be anything that indicates you can buy progress or you can buy anything that would get you an advantage over other players who don't spend money in the shop, and it seems to be cosmetics only. For example, you can buy some mounts, you can buy skins that change your player character model, you can buy glyphs that change the appearance of your druid forms, and just general cosmetic stuff like that. Would it have been better to get these as in-game rewards for cool challenges and different events? Absolutely, but I think every server is going to have a donation shop in order to keep the server going, and in my eyes, a cosmetic shop is probably the best case scenario. One of the first things that I like to do on a server is just do a slash who check just to get an idea of the population. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that there were 800 people online, which is a nice little community. This is actually bigger than a lot of other projects that I've seen of this caliber. This is more than enough players to get something together for group content, and I'd expect the server to grow in the coming months. I also noticed some extra NPCs that were placed in the starting area. These NPCs were sparring and practicing, which makes sense for the area that I'm in. This showed to me that there was a reason and context for these extra NPCs being placed here. It really helped immerse me in the area and kind of added to the classic WoW experience. And that set my expectation for the custom content on this server going forward. So after doing some leveling in the starting area like normal, resist? Really? The Turtle Wild dev team was incredibly nice enough to lend me a temporary max level character so that I might be able to check out some of the new custom zones, the quest hubs, and some of the custom dungeons. I really appreciate that, so thanks so much to the Turtle Wild dev team. You guys are awesome. As mentioned earlier, this is a vanilla leveling rate server. 
but as you know, Classic WoW had a bit of a shortage when it came to quests. That is not the case for Turtle WoW, as they've added a ton of custom new leveling hubs and quests to help smooth out that leveling experience. And what I love about these custom quests and areas is that they feel very vanilla WoW. They feel as though they fit right into that classic experience. These custom areas are very immersive and do not detract from the classic WoW feel. A really cool example of this was an entirely new custom island called Gilligem's Isle, located just outside of STV. This was an entirely new questing hub area with cool things to do, new quests, and elite bosses to try to kill. Emphasis on the try. Alright, there seems to be a big boy here. Big, A big hydra. I'm gonna take him out. What? Uh, well then. Another cool example is you might know that in Classic, Azara is usually pretty barren with not much to do in it. However, on Turtle WoW, there is a cool little horde outpost with several quests to do, thus making Azara a viable place to go for leveling. After running around and exploring some of the new areas for a bit, I wanted to queue up for two of the new endgame dungeons currently available on Turtle WoW, Karazhan Crypts, and Stormwind Vault. Now I know what you're thinking, hey dungeon party finding tools in a classic experience, what gives? Well upon queuing up and hitting the accept button, you'll notice that the dungeon finder tool doesn't actually teleport you to the dungeon. It instead is only used as a tool to find other players on the server to match with. And I think that's fine, I think it makes the world feel bigger and is more in line with that classic experience. However, since my party had gone Stormwind Vaults, a new custom dungeon no one had done before, we went soul searching through the forest for about 30 minutes until we could find the entrance. And upon entering, I was greeted with this. Ugh, oh, finally made- what? Wait, wait, hold on, wait a second. Come, come on, come, no, please, Ugh. what? Ugh. Once the dungeon mob had settled its hate and disdain for me, we were finally able to start the dungeon, and it went something like this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, so much damage, oh, and I'm dead. Holy crap. This dungeon is like ridiculously hard. We had gone through the first couple of mobs before our healer understandably left for his own sanity, thus having our group fall apart. This truly is the classic experience. The custom dungeons on Turtle WoW are not for the faint of heart, and if you're looking for a true dungeon challenge to take on with guildies or your friends, then this might be the perfect content for you. But I didn't want my custom dungeon journey to end there, so I set out to Ashenvale to find a level 32 custom dungeon called the Crescent Grove. Now this dungeon was okay, again it felt very classic, but really it was just a huge open space with an absolute ton of mobs running around. It wasn't a very linear dungeon at all, and I would probably think that at this level of being 32 with a full party, Unless you knew exactly where the bosses were, this dungeon would take you quite a long time. In fact, it does say that the expected clear time for this dungeon is 2-2.5 two to two and a half hours. And even as a max level character, I was finding it very difficult to solo most of the bosses in this level 32 dungeon. So again, I would expect that this dungeon is geared more towards the guildies or friends who want challenging content to clear while they're leveling. However, if you're just looking for a dungeon to level quickly in, I would imagine this dungeon would be very frustrating and sort of tedious to some. As it really is just a huge open space with a ton of mobs running around and bosses that are just scattered throughout and can be kind of difficult to find if you are new to this custom dungeon. Now let's talk about another cool feature of this server, the survival profession. Now to get started with this new profession, you gotta travel down to Nessingwari's camp, which is located in Stranglethorn Vale. From there, you'll talk to an NPC who gives you an easy quest to go out and gather some components, and once you complete this quest, you have access to the survival profession. Upon picking up the profession, you'll notice that the only item you have to craft is a dim torch. It's easy enough to craft as you just buy simple wood for it. You can equip the torches and everything, and they look pretty cool as they do give off a cool glow in the environment, and I imagine this looks really cool at night. However, to craft the next big item, which is a tent that gives a rest bonus, among other things, you have to get your profession skill up to 75, but the torches stop giving you experience at 60. Now the other thing you can make is something called a bright campfire. This is basically just a bigger campfire that probably gives you better stats, and it gives you one point each time you make it. 
So this is the only way to bridge the gap between 60 and 75, and it's on a five minute cooldown. So it becomes kind of just an artificial awkward time gate before you can start making tents. I honestly would have liked to have seen a few more items to craft when you first get the profession. That way it's a little bit more interesting. So after creating a bunch of bright campfires while running around, I had finally reached my goal. However, for some reason, whenever I opened the survival window to try and craft a tent, the profession window would bug out on me and not let me craft it. Eventually, after many bright campfires later, I finally got to level 75, picked up the pattern to make a tent, and unfortunately, the whole survival window became bugs for me and I wasn't able to craft the tents. Even relogging multiple times and just trying everything I could to try to fix it didn't work. So it's clear to see that the survival profession is really cool, it's heading in the right direction, but it's unpolished and could use some work. So that about covers a lot of the major features that the server has to offer. But now I want to break down my final thoughts after putting a decent amount of time into the server. It has great custom content. A lot of the extra placed assets and NPCs have a purpose and have been thought out. They aren't just randomly placed assets and are placed in a way to help you immerse in the area that you're in. Challenging Custom Dungeons The new dungeons were extremely challenging and are geared more towards WoW veterans who are looking for a greater challenge to play with their friends or guildies. The server boasts a pretty friendly community. Everyone I had run into or talked to were pretty helpful and very nice. The server has a pretty decent population, and there are plenty of people at max level to do endgame content with. And lastly, it delivers on its promise of being a true vanilla plus server. It feels very immersive, and all of the systems feel very classic and don't seem out of place. The few downsides of this server for me so far and what I think they can work on are... I think the survival profession is pretty cool, but it could definitely use a bit more polish and it would be really cool to have a couple more things added to craft to make it more interesting. There's no class rebalance or overhaul yet, though again the devs have stated it's on the way with no date given. I was a little disappointed to see that the classes were for the most part untouched. I'm really interested to see how they can make changes to all the classes to make the weaker ones feel stronger and kind of balance everything while keeping the classic WoW feel. And that about covers my experience with TurtleWoww. Overall, I really enjoyed playing on it, and if I had more time to dedicate towards playing Classic WoW again, I could definitely see myself playing on this server. If I had to put a rating on it, I'd probably give this server a very strong 7 out of 10, with the definite possibility of it being bumped up to an 8 or a 9, with more features and just a bit more polish. I think this is a great example of a team taking Classic WoW and adding a ton of cool new features to make it feel fresh again. If you've played on Turtle WoW, let me know what your experiences have been like in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and sub button, and I'll see you all in the next video.